Well, thank you. Um, thank you so much. I just want to start out with prayer. God, I just thank you for this opportunity that you're preparing our hearts and our minds, God, to receive what you have for us today. God, I thank you that you are the one that heals and delivers. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. The fear of man brings a snare, but whosoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Proverbs 29, verse 25. The fear of man brings a snare. And that's what happened to me in my life. The fear of failure, the fear of not being accepted and not fitting in. I grew up in a little town called Maria Stein, the youngest out of eight kids. And I uh, compared myself to my brothers, how good they were at doing things, and for me, not so much. Uh, I remember one story when we, uh, I had the job of washing the car, so I got the floor brush out, and I, and I scrubbed the hood of the car. And needless to say, it wasn't very shiny anymore. So it seemed like car de detailing was uh, out of the question for me. So somewhere along the line, I found music when life got messy. I loved how music made me feel. So I just got involved in music. When I was about 15 years old, I started playing music. Um, and, it, and I just, it just was, you know, it was, I felt that was going to be my ticket to fit in. That was my ticket to be somebody, to be accepted in my life was to play music. I just thought that would be it. So I started playing in church about when I was 16 and started partying at the same time. And for all the same reasons, just to fit in, just to be part of something, to be involved in, in, in people's lives. And uh, um, I was so influenced with the music. Um, I thought, uh, you know, their party lifestyle was what I needed to do to write songs. So I just, you know, I thought that's what I did as a rock and roll, and I started going down that slippery slide, and I started playing in bars when I was 18 and 19. And, uh, you know, so we got our beer for free and our drugs for free, you know, and chicks for free if you want to go into that song. That was the, the lifestyle, you know, of wanting to be accepted. And, oh, this is cool. This is, this, is, this is working. This is what, you know, I thought would, would, would make me feel loved. I had hope in my music. I had faith in it that it would bring me there. And... Uh, and, and um, um, then, then one Christmas day, this is, this is really stopped me in my tracks. Mom told me that she had cancer on Christmas Day. And uh, I didn't know how to, to handle it. I wasn't very good at communicating. I wasn't very good at talking. Just doing this is, is a miracle in my eyes for what God can do to somebody. You know, and, 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 and so I wasn't good at communicating. I think that's why I like songwriting, so I could write things out because I didn't know how to talk. I think I talked to my mom two times when she had cancer, and she was at her house. She was on hospice, and she died nine months later, and I felt like something a part of me died also with my mom. So, so now I was careless, didn't fit in and careless, so it didn't matter what, what drugs I did. It didn't matter what I, what I did. The day of the funeral, I got some whiskey and some drugs, and I never looked back, and that was my lifestyle for 10 years, and we had some good success, or mild success, however you want to look, look about it. We opened up for some bigger bands. Um, you know, we, we played bigger shows. But that wasn't good for me. I, I would get too wasted. I was so nervous. I'd fall off the stage sometimes. You know, I'd just be so high using morphine. I'd just go into morphine, you know, use some drugs, and, and I'd drink like a fish. I always was drinking. Drinking and drugging, whatever you got. It didn't really matter. I just wanted to party, and it got to the point where it was just about the party, and it wasn't about the music anymore. You know, the music kind of set me free from my fear, you know, and, it, and, it, and, it, and then, the, then, it, then it was the drugs was setting me free. And it was about the drugs. It was about the party. And, and my life just, just went a mess. And it was like I hit a, hit a wall. And I lost everything that I had. I, uh, I had a good job, lost it, the place I lived in. I got kicked out. Uh, the band I was in, it was, it was done. So the things that I thought that was gonna make me fit in and make my, my family proud or make people proud of me, left me empty. It didn't bring the love that I was looking for. It was lost in what I thought that I should do to, 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 to get that through the music. And it's just amazing. I called my friend, Missy, uh, um, and told her I was sick. And what was amazing about that, I, I dated Missy for six, six years prior and I hadn't talked to her for like three years. I seen her at my friend's funeral, and uh, and uh, and I wasn't kind to her. I, you know, I, I was unfaithful to her. For her to even take my phone call 
was a blessing. You know, and I told her I was sick, and she just shared uh, Jesus had a plan and purpose for my life. You know, and, and it started, I was so paranoid and so lost and so confused. I mean, I literally couldn't sleep when I hit that broke wall, brick wall, as I'd say. I mean, I had to black out to fall asleep. I could not find rest. I was so paranoid. My, my friends had bars. They would let me lay on the, on the, on the porch, or they put me in the house, but they would just lay me on my, on my stomach. I only had a couch in the place I was at with the green tubbleware. So it, didn't, it was just a mess. And she knew where I was at. She knew I was sick, and she just shared hope. And like I said, she didn't really have to talk to me. And she kept just sh sh saying how much Jesus cares and how much the purpose and plan that he has for your life. And I took heed. And I listened, and the amazing thing is through that green tub that just had junk in it, I thought, was my mom's Bible. You know, and, and I started reading in Proverbs, because that's just what Dad would do when we were little. He'd read Proverbs to us. And, and so I, I got to the verse, Proverbs 4, 19. It says, the way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. And I said, that is me. That's when I fell on my knees. I'm that wicked guy that can't rest, that I got to do something crazy, I got to act out, I got to do all this stuff. I'm this selfish person, and, I, and I'm, I'm that wicked guy. I, can't, I don't know what I'm tripping on. I don't know what I'm doing. And, 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 and I just said, Jesus, just forgive me for everything that I've done, everything I said to you, God. I, 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 I hated God. I didn't want nothing to do with God through that point in my life. And I confess that I'm sorry, God, for the way I felt towards you. And God, I, I ask you to forgive me for what I said to my parents, what I said to my brothers and sisters, to friends, to people I don't even know. I ask God to forgive me. Jesus, forgive me. And you know what he did? He forgave me. He forgave me. Forgive Jesus the hand. And he... And, and that's what we're here today, just to know that Jesus will forgive you. It doesn't matter how far or how long you've gone. That's what the cross is about. He died the terriblest death that anybody can die just to show that it doesn't matter how far you've gone. He'll reach down. He'll bring you home. You're his children. You're his kids. He loves you. He loves you. And all you got to do is cry out to him. He says it in the word of God. You cry out to Jesus, and he saves you. He saves you. So if you're here in the audience or you're watching, just cry out to Jesus. You might be going to church. You might be hopeless. You might not even deal with addiction. But he'll give you that hope. Just cry out to him. Just cry out to him. We can pray. And, we, and if you want to pray with me, you can. And you, you just receive what Jesus has for you. Walk into your Father's arm, your Heavenly Father. And when that verse said, when I first read, he says, they that trust in him will be safe. And he'll make you safe. He'll give you peace. You won't have to run anymore. You won't feel like you failed anymore. Just be faithful to him, and he'll be faithful to you. Just pray. In Jesus' name, we just loose your Holy Spirit, God. If anybody's feeling the tug in their heart, God, I thank you, Father God, that you open that, that they open themselves up to receive what you're trying to speak to them right now in this moment. Today is the day. You might not have tomorrow. Whatever you're facing, you might not feel like you can get out of it, but I guarantee you, if you cry out, he will break it off of you. Just let him be who he says he is. Don't judge him. Let him love you. When you want to pray, you say, Jesus, I ask you to be the Lord of my life. I ask you into my heart. Make it anew. I ask you to turn from my ways and ask you to give me strength to turn to your ways. I repent and give my life to you, Jesus. And now you said, I'm saved. You've prayed that prayer. That's it. Get in that Bible and ask God for direction, and he'll give it. And he'll give you hope. He'll give you love. He'll give you something to believe in. Just seek after him. We have numbers that we're going on. You can call out. If you make a commitment to Jesus, you, you want to make this journey, and if you've prayed that before and you rededicated yourself to Jesus, 
call and talk. And if anybody here today in the audience want to talk and pray and made that commitment, we're here. I'm here. Me and my wife are here. Just talk to someone. Let someone know what you did and be excited. We're rejoicing with you. It says when you do that, you move the hand of God that you wrote, that he wrote your name in the Lamb Book of Life. And we just thank you for it. Just thank you. I just th want to thank you for watching. I want to thank you for everybody for being here and just sharing your heart and know that Jesus can change and bring you hope. We just thank you for it.